And we're joined now by political analyst Karim Boulos to really take a deep dive into this budget. Karim, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so the first thing is the coronavirus. This is something that, you know, everyone is talking about. The budget not really planning for this. Of course, this budget probably written, you know, about a month ago. But what is your take? Do you think we might see another mini budget? It's not uncommon to see uh, addenda added to a budget or changes made that reflect unforeseen or changes of information or new data and COVID-19 is clearly something that's hit the world in a shocking way that people didn't really anticipate its its rapid spread. So I would expect to see something, a slight change or a mini budget, if you will, sometime in the coming weeks. This budget really does focus on the environment and perhaps surprisingly because the CAQ doesn't necessarily have a green reputation. So what do you make of this switch, this focus, you know, on the future of the environment? Well, the CAQ was a little bit, you know, uh, painted up and down for its position on Bill 40, on its position on immigration. So it's had to do a little bit of work to bring back some of the confidence and and credibility in its ability to manage the province. So it's doing things that people didn't necessarily expect with the environment, spending money on recycling plants, uh, safe disposal of refrigerators and electronic equipment, uh, investing in the La Route Verte and trying to spend money on new infrastructure that will allow for electrification, which is a huge component of, of Hydro-Quebec's mission to electrify and bring in new renewable resources instead of relying on fossil fuels. So the green shift, if you will, is a strategic move and one that shows the, that what, what the CAQ wants to show Quebecers that it's not the party that we think it is. It's one that is progressive in thinking forward about ways that it can improve the life of Quebecers into the next you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And if we look, there's not really a lot of uh, tax breaks. There's, it, it seems to be a very safe budget, yeah. you know, a half mandate budget, not an election yeah. budget. Exactly. But who do you think is coming out uh, as the winners of this budget? Well, I mean, the CAQ comes off like a winner because it's trying to do what it said it was going to do, uh, you know, eliminate certain ways we spend for school boards, uh, uh, organizing the tax system for what you pay depending on what school region you're in, a senior care givers are going to be able to have money to have seniors stay home for their treatment. Uh, Pre-K kindergarten, four-year-old kindergarten spaces, uh, environmental investiture, um, infrastructure, of course, you know, we need to have that for the roads and repairs and, you know, aging infrastructure, especially in Montreal. So Montreal is going to get a good share of that. Recycling plants. Uh, we have money to families in the form of uh, health support for children at risk, uh, at risk of not graduating on time. So the education system is getting the money because, I, remember, the education program was really the focus. Education was the, the, the cornerstone of the CAQ campaign when it was elected. So I think they're following through on their promise and it's a it's a good balanced budget. It doesn't put anybody out and it gives a little bit of something to all the groups that need it. And you mentioned there some of the things that Montreal is getting. Uh, one of the things that Mayor Plant has been very outspoken about is that pink line. No mention of the pink line. However, you know, Montreal is getting money for the REM. And the yellow line, do you think that's a strategic move as well? Because we know that the voter base, CAQ, doesn't have a big yeah. voter base in Montreal, but more in the suburbs towards the 450. Well, I mean, the importance is that they put money into public transit. And that's the message it sends, into, into you know, renewable ways of moving people around the, the city. So whether it's the yellow line or the pink line eventually, and the pink line is far from done. I mean, recent numbers show a cost of approximately estimated 17 billion to make it happen. So, you know, th there's not going to be a lot of money yet allocated until there's an actual game plan. There's a promise and an intent from the federal government and, and the provincial government to invest in new strategies. But specifically, I think once we saw, once we see a plan for the pink line, you'll then have something to invest in. But right now, the yellow line is there. There's ways to increase its reach and reduce the impact on the, the bridge, for example, and reduce you know, traffic in the tunnel. I think the, the move is a wise, it's a safe, as you said. It's a prudent move to put money where it can be put to use immediately. All right, Karim, thank you so much. Always nice to hear your experience there. And we'll be looking into uh, dissecting the budget and what it means for your budget, th for your wallet, excuse me, throughout the night. In Montreal, Tina Teneriello, City News.